going to appear a little backwards because I had a CNC plasma using this board to help create a metal plate before I installed the AXBB. This board did not support the torch height controller, so I decided to upgrade, but it did however support general movement and torch on off, which is enough to cut out this project. This is how I plan to create my control box or plate layout. The large holes would be for the aviation plugs. The smaller holes would be to hold all of the breakout boards, power supplies, relays, motor drivers, and bus bars. The medium size holes will be used to hold the plate to the control box or card in my instance. First, I got started this project by creating a sketch. I use the schematics of my parts in order to place everything where I believe is a good spot and to have the mounting holes line up with how I want everything placed. The rectangles you are seeing are to represent the full size of the boards and parts. The three lines on the left-hand side will be for my bend reliefs. They will help me orient the part of my metal brake so my bend is nice, straight, and easier to bend. The second thing I like to do is use the extrude function on Fusion to give my part some depth. This helps me see the part and maybe catch a mistake before it is cut. It can also help see the offset in the manufacturing workspace to make sure the torch is offsetting in the correct direction. The next thing I did was convert the body into a sheet metal so I could show a bend in Fusion 360. I also wanted to create a small part to be 3D printed. This part's purpose is to act as a spacer in between some breakout boards and my metal plate. Since there is no insulation on the bottom of some of the board or pins, and we don't want those shorting. Next, we are going to the manufacturer workplace to share how I generated the toolpath. First is creating the setup, and we only want to use the metal plate, so we're going to change where it says model to only include the plate. We want to cut the bend reliefs first, so we know the part doesn't move by cutting the outside first. So this first toolpath will be for those three lines. We are going to select those by showing the sketch and while in the geometry tab of the 2D profile tool. It is very important that we select the offset as the center offset. This will make the plasma be centered rather than offset to the left or right. I also like to have smoothing on in order to stop some of the jerkiness a CNC can have on arcs and corners. It is also very important to have no lead in, lead out, or pierce clearance. The second tool path will include an offset to be a closer tolerance cut. So, we are going to select the whole face of the part we made. This is one reason why I like to give depth to my part, so we can select the whole face. We're going to select left as the compensation. Also, I like to have in computer as the compensation type. This means the tool offset is generated in the code rather than in your G code center via the tool number. And I also want to use smoothing. In our linking tab, we wanted to set the lead in distance and lead out distance to something that is applicable. Since I have four millimeter holes, I decided one millimeter lead in and lead out is okay. In order to generate the G-code for both tool paths in one code file, we right hand click on our setup and then select post process. Since this is an old setup, the post processor I used applies to that board in Mach 3 that I used before UCCNC. Since there is no torch height controller on this setup, my dad is holding the metal sheet down so the tip doesn't have to account for any warps or bends. This is how the plate cut out. It picked right out and only needed a little cleanup on some of the holes. A little slag. It's beautiful. After the board was cut out, bent, and a few of the electrical components were mounted, I decided to give it a test fit. This is how it looks inside the cart. For this project, I wanted the wires to look clean and organized. So I used these round ferrule crimps at the wire ends because they fit really nicely to give a secure and solid connection to the terminals of the stepper drivers and AXBB. This is what the crimps and the crimping tool looks like. In order to use the ferrule crimps, 
We are first going to strip the wires and then give a little twist to the ends of the wire so we have no frayed ends. We are then going to slide the crimp on. Using the crimping tool, we are going to crimp the metal half. And I have to do this three more times for this group of wires and even more for the rest. Next, I want to show you soldering the aviation plugs. A little secret with these is that the pins are going to be made of aluminum. Aluminum has a property where it radiates heat very well. So in order to combat this, we want a soldering iron that gets very hot or has adjustable temperatures. Also, we should use clean and plenty of flux. It is very important that we look at which pin we are soldering which wire to, making sure it follows the schematics or the document I went over in my last video. This one plug has four pins we have to solder. Since the pins are aluminum, they can be very annoying and time-consuming to solder. It could take me upwards to 10 minutes to complete one plug, but I don't have many to do. So I think it is worth it because they look nice and organized. Here's a photo of how the ferrule crimps work in these types of terminals. I'm not going to focus too much more on wiring because it mostly follows my plans in the document from the last video. And it is just plugging in wires to tightening down terminals. I have a 36 volt power supply to power my stepper motor drivers. A 24 volt power supply to power almost everything else. I also have a 5 volt power supply that will power the pulses on the AXBB. I took the time to label everything with my vinyl cutter, which I think turned out really pleasing to look at. On the bottom right of the control panel is my trigger relay. Using the normally open pins, we can turn the torch on and off. In order to cool everything, I am using two 12-volt computer fans. But I don't have a 12-volt power supply. So by wiring the fans in series rather than parallel, the voltage drop of the two fans will add to 24 volts. In order to get my slave axis, or YB, to move the opposite direction than YA. Even though I have the step and pulse pins jump between the two, I simply switch the pairs going to the motor. So normally the wires in white sheath follow the order of the Z, which goes black, white, red, green. But for YB, they are switched and are ordered red, green, black, white. So on the male ends of the aviation plugs, I used metal sheathing to protect the wires from the elements and noise or high frequencies, even though I shouldn't have any. I also use ferrite clips, which will resist high changes in the magnetic field. Whenever we have a high frequency, the current will change from back to forth, causing the magnetic field to also change direction. And since the ferrite clips resist that, in theory, it should stop the high frequencies. I do not have the ferrite clips installed onto the wires going to the steppers. However, I don't believe any pulses for the stepper uses is going to be a high enough frequency that the ferrite clip would affect it. In the bottom of my cart from left to right, I have my torch height controller, voltage divider, and then my plasma cutter. They all hide very nicely underneath the cart, which can roll under the CNC and not be in the way. I'm going to open up UCCNC in order to run a test program. I do not have metal on the table at this moment, so it's just going to probe on the plastic cover sheet. That is one hint that is really helpful. Get a corrugated plastic cover to go over your water table. It will cut down on the evaporation. Also, it will cut down on the water, collecting all the dust and grindings in a shop setting. I did end up cutting this out of metal. This is what the final product looked like right off the table. Then after I cleaned it up a little and hung it on my wall. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.